Hi, thanks for joining me. In this video, I want to look at the mathematics behind the ideal gas law. An ideal gas is one that behaves according to the premises laid out in kinetic molecular theory. And there are five of them. You can watch that video if you would like. Um, molecules move in straight line paths. They collide with the container more often than one another. Collisions are elastic. Molecules have negligible volume compared to their uh, the volume of the container. They experience no intermolecular forces. So you might want to, you know, that was a quick run through of most of those premises, but you'll probably want to take a look at that video if you're not familiar with that. If all of those are true, we call it an ideal gas. So in this case, uh, in the ideal gas law, we're not looking at changes in our variables. Um, we're going to have one singular pressure, one singular volume, one set of moles, and one temperature. The proportionality constant, um, R, is a proportionality constant. I'm going to rearrange this. The ideal gas law, um, I like to call it Pevenert, has the form pressure volume is moles times this constant times T. So R is PV over NT. It's simply a proportionality constant. So its units are laid out, you know, just to make all the units cancel. Okay, so the units have to be the same on both sides of the equation. So you'll notice that the R units, this isn't a math formula. I separated that because I have students look at that and want to call that a formula because, you know, you're not used to such complicated units. Okay, so these are the units of R. When R is in liters for volume, and you notice it's always in liters for volume. So when you do Pevenert, you have to use liters uh, because those are the R units we know. Now for pressure, uh, well, I'm going to do temperature in moles. So we've got volume in liter. Moles, of course, are moles. So those are in the denominator of each. Temperature, of course, hint, hint, is Kelvin. It has to be Kelvin. Now, the one thing you'll see is we tend to provide for you on tests. I personally don't make my students memorize these. However, you'll use them so much that many of you will naturally memorize them. If my pressure is in atmospheres, so if I had in pressure in atmospheres and my R would be in atmospheres, then the value for R would be 0.0821. If the pressure is in tor, so if my pressure's in tor, this is the R value I want to grab. If my pressure's in kilopascals, this is the R value that I want to grab. So the values really are matching pressure. So you have to pick the correct R value to match your pressure. You know what an alternative would be is to memorize one of these and convert your pressure every time. That's really up to you. So many of the students will memorize 0.0821 and always convert their pressure to atmospheres when they're dealing with an ideal gas law. Okay. Now there are three helpful forms of the ideal gas law. Your main gas law is of course PV, pressure times volume is equal to moles times the gas constant, the proportionality constant times temperature. Well, moles are equal to mass over molar mass. So knowing this equation can be handy. Now, do you have to know that equation? No, you can do these in two, two steps. You know that moles are equal to mass over molar mass, and so you can use that formula, and then you can always use PV is equal to nRT. Okay, so you don't really have to memorize that, but I find it to be very handy to have that one. Now, the other one is a gas density. Now, density for gas is going to be in grams per liter. Yes, you can derive this. You can solve this equation. Density, remember, is um, mass over volume. And so, yeah, you can solve this for your mass over your volume. 
Um, I, I just find that cumbersome, and this is easy to memorize, especially since Lisa McGaw years ago, I'm sure she doesn't even remember it, taught me what I call them, what we call the meow meow equation. So the meow meow formula, molar mass, and the reason is it's called the meow meow is because cats put dirt, D-R-T, over their pee. So that's a little mnemonic device to help you memorize when the question either asks for density or gives density. Again, this is, will be a particularly important to list your givens for these equations so you know which formula or formulas to use. So let's take a look. In this question, I'm going to list my givens. I'm going to do these pretty quickly. I'm going to list my givens. I'm going to check my units. I'm going to write the equation, and I'm going to substitute and solve. And these are this is the ideal gas law is what we're using for all of these. Okay, So it's asking me, what is my molar mass equal to? Uh, if I have a mass equal to 1.6 grams, I have a volume equal to 500 point milliliters. That makes sure I have three sig figs there. I have a pressure equal to 2,500 millimeters of mercury. You know, I just switched that out right away for Tor, frankly. And I have a temperature equal to, oh my gosh, they were so kind. The question gives it to us already in Kelvin. And it asks us what is the molar mass and what element does it represent. So the next thing I need to do is check my units. My only problematic unit here is this 500 milliliters. Now many of you love to shift decimals. And after grading the AP test for years and years and years, uh, don't be a decimal shifter. I can't tell you how many students shift it the wrong way. So don't be a decimal shifter. I want to get rid of milliliters and I want liters. So I know that one milliliter is one times 10 to the minus third liters and that gets me my 0 0.500 liters. Okay, since this has mass and molar mass in it, I like to use this formula directly. You could do this in two steps. You could convert in step one, convert mass to moles, and then use PV is equal to NRT if you prefer. Okay? Um, I'm going to use this combined equation. So for pressure, I'm going to put in 2,500. For my volume, it's 0.5 equals my 1.6 grams over my molar mass. Make sure you do this math. Don't just trust my value here. I say that in particular because when the unknown is in the denominator, a lot of you will mess up your algebra a little bit. So double check both of our algebra there. Now, since my pressure is in Tor, the R value I'm going to grab is 62.4. And then my pressure is 350. So that gave me a molar mass of 28.0 grams per mole. Now remember the question said it was diatomic. So I have to divide that by two, right? Because that equals X2, diatomic. If I divide that by two, I get 14 grams. So that means X is nitrogen. So this must be nitrogen gas. All right, let's do one more. Um, I know this is a little long, but I think that it's important for you to see some of these worked out. This is a density one. So it says, what is the density of my oxygen gas at a temperature equal to 70.0 degrees Celsius? You know, some of you won't even bother with this check your unit step you'll just automatically put that this is 343.15 Kelvin. Okay, um, I make my students show their math, so you want to show your math for that one. But man, the minute you see degrees Celsius, change it right away. My pressure is 3.00 atm. 
nothing changed. I don't have two pressures or two temperatures. And um, my R, if I have a pressure of atmospheres, is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. So since it's density, the only equation I have is the meow meow equation. It's meow meow because cats put dirt, D-R-T, over their P. So my molar mass of oxygen, don't forget that it is diatomic. And there's my density times my 0 0.0821 over, I don't put my units in here because I've already checked all my units. Again, that's up to your teacher. Um, I don't know why I did that, went ahead and did my plug and chug there, and I got 3.41. Don't forget your units. Unlike solids and liquids, solids and liquids, you're going to tend to see grams per ml or grams per centimeter cubed. Gases are grams per liter, so don't forget those units, and this is the ideal gas law. Thank you so much for your patience. If I went too fast, um, slow me down. Um, if I went too slow, <laughs> speed me up, but I hope I would help you in either direction. Thanks lots.